Hi, all right, so this is my share for the Dakar 2005 to 2007 Dakar F650 GS. Um, I have found a lot of cool stuff on YouTube and online for this bike to help you solve situations and fix problems and find out more about the bike. And I'd like to add my five cents because it's helpful when trying to learn about the bike or maintain the bike yourself or fix things uh, so that you have more knowledge if it breaks down on or off-road. This bike has been my favorite. I've owned Fireblades, Sports Tourers, Cruisers, uh, even the 1200 GS I've had as well too. Um, and they all were great bikes in their own design, but this has been a phenomenal uh, workhorse and a pleasure to ride uh, on and off-road. She has enough power and uh, even though the top end isn't amazing, uh, there's enough low down torque to make her jumpy and lively. Uh, and you don't need to go much f faster than 120 kilometers an hour off-road anyway, because if you come off, you're gonna, you're gonna pay for it. Uh, and she can easily get over 120 kilometers an hour, um, though she seems to be the most unhappiest at that speed with vibration and sounds a bit whiny. But past that and below that, um, she really doesn't mind and can. So a few things that I've learned about the bike. Um, <laughs> parts are expensive. Please excuse those hardy dog birds. Very South African bird. They're going to be screaming. I don't want to throw rocks at them, but they are annoying. A few things that I've learned about the bike. Uh, parts are very expensive, um, but the bike does fit a variety of aftermarket and other brands. So you can maintain and keep the bike on the road and looking neat. Because uh, I've laid her down a few times on an off-road, it happens, you know. There are only two kinds of riders, those that have fallen and those that are going to still fall. It's part of learning. Um, mirrors break off and flicker lights break off when you lay her down quite easily. Mirrors are quite expensive, but the flicker lights or the indicator lights, as you might know them, are not too bad. So uh, underneath this shell here yeah, sits the battery and uh, you need a little tool that can open those little guys, those little tie downs, screws. Uh, so make sure you have an Allen key or uh, an appropriate fitting um, spanner or tool that can open those up. You see those birds are going to drive me insane but <clears throat> we continue so i i initially bought this little uh, set to work on an opal corsa way back in the day corsa is Vauxhall for the australians uh and uh yeah normal allen keys wouldn't work you can see that it's got like a star a star instead of like um squared square um octagon or uh whatever the, the shape is uh, so you need something like that. Also, the Chinese and Indians make these little toolkits. I'm not going to open it up, but it's got a variety of little heads inside there and then a, a, a handle to work with. It's got like, I actually bought this to work on cell phones and tablets and laptops, and it's become very handy with um, bikes and cars with uh, fittings and trims and getting into places. Um, let's look a bit closer down here. Um, so I've just had the fork tree done and cleaned and new seals. That's something you need to watch on this bike because it's got a lot of travel and it works quite hard on the bike. And uh, so you keep an eye on uh, rust and leaks. Um, but I've only done that once, had them replaced and cleaned and they were quite badly damaged and rusted because I, I was living at the coast. Um, and they're good as new now. You can put uh, socks around them, covers uh, made of, um, um, wetsuit material, neoprene, whatever it's called, uh, but uh, only if you're doing hectic off-road. Um, otherwise, what happens is you cover them and you forget to check them and then you end up with a disaster. So if you're just doing uh, mostly on-road stuff and then sometimes getting on a dirt road on the farm or um, uh, an, al al an alternate route along a, a dirt path, you're, you're fine. Just keep them clean, wash the bike regularly. Um, Here's, here's where the oil goes in and uh, it's got a dipstick which is cool 
uh, to keep an eye on the oil. The oil is something you have to check on these models as well. I've also previously owned a regular F650, a 90 something model, and that was a single cylinder. And that also ate a bit of oil. Uh, it was also a legend bike, easy to uh, fix, easy to adjust the timing. All you had to do on that bike was just uh, watch the oil and then obviously once a year or every 10 or so thousand kilometers do a service for plugs and fluids and filters. Um, yeah, like everybody says, um, it doesn't have a, a, a fuel, a fuel, um, there's a little, a little fuel light that comes on when you have about 50 miles left or 80 kilometers I found. But it's not a big problem, just always fill up when you have the opportunity, especially if you're on the open road or traveling far, whenever you have the opportunity, just top up your bike and when the light comes on, you know you've got about 80 kilometers of fuel left. Just decrease your speed, conserve and you'll be fine. I mean, you shouldn't be 100 kilometers away from anything without spare fuel anyway. So yeah, this, um, this used to be attached around the back tire like this, but when I wheelied the bike, it broke off, but it's also cool because uh, um, those that know and that have been telling me says that uh, when you go off-road, things get stuck in their logs and branches and stuff and it, it can throw you off your bike or break or damage your bike. Uh, there's a variety of back tires you can put on this bike from knobblies to 50-50s to on-road, depending what you want to do with the bike, where you're going with the bike. Um, uh, then um, this little guy here is uh, apparently it's a cylinder or uh, a place where you uh, put nitrogen into the rear suspension, which I've just recently had redone and rebuilt. Uh, this is this is the knob to manually adjust your um, suspension, uh, which is quite cool. I don't really find a huge difference. I've got it set quite quite tight. Uh, I haven't really had massive experience with discomfort. I've traveled for hours on this bike and I always only need to stop when I'm hungry, thirsty or need fuel. Even with a pillion, lovely back seat. Uh, probably could have given this bike a wash before I did this video, but she's a worker and she, she, she's in her environment. She likes to be um, working and <laughs> as you can see, she's standing in between tools and trailers and stuff. Because I'm going to give her a clean now, just thought I'd do this video while I'm on it. Uh, fuel obviously yeah she's got two uh, tailpipes on uh, but one is a dummy this one is just a dummy I think it acts as part of the silencing system so sometimes in the beginning I was freaking out because only one pipe was emitting stuff um, like I said I've traveled on and off-road she's never let me down um, one time the brakes did catch at the back they seized up and I just loosened this valve here and uh, the fluid came out and the brakes released and I took it into the shop and my friend Donnie from Randberg Motorcycles helped me sort it out. Previous to that, the guys in Durban from Tidal Motorcycles are also awesome guys to work through if you're in South Africa, I'll give them a shout out. They do awesome work and really go the extra mile. My bike is looking a little bit worse for wear. The, wear. Uh, she's been standing for a long time as I was uh, caught up with a project for a year and she uh, had to stand she got a bit of rust and all that and also I got knocked off by a bully an old guy in the traffic and she sustained some damages which has been a little bit of rust over time but I'll, I'll clean her up and spray her as finances improve <laughs> but uh, she she's she's awesome she does she does her job she never lets me down she never moans uh, she's uh, on and off road when you lay her down um, she's easy to pick up um, compared to the 1200 which is very heavy especially if you have, if you have panniers on and, and loads I have always tied boxes and tents and sleeping bags and bags just onto these with a nice bunch of ropes and ties and elastics and uh, never lost any equipment or had any problems um, yeah, like I said, she's, she has a bit of cosmetic damage, um, but but she likes she likes to work and she likes to be um, doing some adventurous stuff, um, and I love I love her dearly. And when I can, I do fix what I can. This is a nice little compartment to put some tools and stuff in. Um, 
tool bag. I also keep the, the manuals here um, and papers for the bike in a plastic bag um, because there is some handy information inside there. You can also find a variety of cool stuff on the internet to print and keep on the bike for troubleshooting problems. When you do get into situations, let's just have a look at this, what's inside here. Because I have some specific things inside here that, that are handy. Um, important to have an adjusting, a small adjusting wrench, a tiny little one for nuts and bolts around the bike that you might want to um, work on if you get stuck somewhere. Um, small pliers are handy. This came with the bike, one of those um, Phillips and flat screwdrivers that you can change around if you haven't ever, ever seen that, but hopefully you have if you're riding a Dakar. <laughs> some spanners. This is part of a tie down for something. I think it was for the bag actually. I've never used it for anything. It's a little pipe, some fuses. Here's a little tool that I use to open up the. Um, sorry, my dog wants to have me throw the ball now. Go, yeah, go, go, go. She just wants to play ball the whole time. Um, and then uh, some extra screws and fuses and um, cable ties. These are the things that are most handy. Uh, with these tools, you can access anything inside the bike. Um, I just want to show you what else I learned. This is where the um, fuel filter is. And you just loosen the nuts, take it out, and uh, put puts like a piece of plastic or paper underneath there and lean the bike towards me obviously and then the, the, the fluid will come out and you put the piece of plastic or paper there to guide the fuel over the, the engine so you don't make a mess of it obviously I already mentioned this this over here this over here is part of the back brakes it regulates the, the brake fluid in and out of the brakes I recently had a problem where the fluid wasn't releasing and it was because of a little bit of dirt that was inside this guy and uh, I had to take it in and have it clean. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a massive mission, it was just like a, a morning situation, a, a morning job. Um, and then we've discussed the battery sits over here. Make sure when you replace the battery and buy a new battery that you get the correct, the poles on the correct side because mine, and I'm sure the others, because mine isn't specifically special, only to me, the but battery poles are important because the cables aren't long enough to cross over and I had to retrofit and force the cables and it caused a leak and there was damage inside afterwards but I was in a very rural area on a long journey and I had no other choice what I did was I left my flipping key in the ignition when I arrived at the campsite and said hi to my friends and, and then the battery ran flat because the light was on in front um, I wonder I've also put um, Xenon lights inside here. The white light seems to scare people on the road. They get out of your way faster. It's cool. Uh, back light of the brake light I've replaced as well. Not a big job. Shame here. Yeah. Her nose also has a bit of a bite. I need to give that attention when I can. You know, um, there was also rust on these guys, but we managed to um, get it blasted and clean. All good. Next is the brakes and, and the discs, but they, but they are grafting and they're fine. Protector very important protect your engine and your sump and all that type of stuff when you do take oil out of the bike um, the um, it's underneath the bike is where you open it up there not too difficult to find tricky to access you can also take off this um, um, fairing and access the um, oil tank which is obviously underneath this uh, where you pour it in, the, the inlet or the, the, the opening, the mouth. It sits underneath and back in. You can take this fairing off and open it up and bleed it out, but then you don't get the oil out of the system, which is why you need to access the bottom. Some guys have plates underneath their bikes and they drill an access, an access hole to get... Mad dog, to, to, to get to it. Um, the, the seat... You loosen by pulling on that red lever inside your boot and the seat will pop up and open and you can access uh, what's inside there. There's not much inside there, you're just going to get to the engine. It's not, not a battery or a, a fuel tank or anything. The fuel tank sits on this side and underneath the seat. That's general knowledge. Mine doesn't have heated grips. You can get heated grips. Um, and um, hazards are over here. Um, and yeah, uh, I've also had, had these back, these are aftermarket pegs because BMW are quite expensive and I'm not in that market right now. 
but I am maintaining my baby. I've also seen guys take off these um, double pipes and put different variety of pipes on to get different performance and sounds and feels for the bike. So that's something you can do as well. And um, I feel like I've covered everything that I know uh, for the sake of adding value to the community. And uh, I'll post this in a little while after I've washed her and cleaned her. She's my baby, like I said, she's the most versatile and dynamic uh, lady that I've owned and I will never get rid of her. Um, of course, she's got a, a great strong engine or heart and uh, she's never let me down and she loves all conditions and she's not a, a, a trouble or a hassle to get over things, through things, water, obstacles, when she falls down, easy to pick up even when she's heavily laden. She's comfortable for me. I sit and ride when I ride long. I will sit sometimes in the front. I will sometimes sit with my bum on the back. I'm quite a tall person. Um, and I sit comfortably on the bike with my feet either on, on the normal front pegs or even I rest them on the back pegs when I'm riding. So all the variety of different riding positions that I can sit in to adjust my comfort or discomfort levels. I'm not ever uncomfortable on this bike ever. I've never been uncomfortable. Even with a pillion and luggage and I had a tent and a, a hiking bag on my lap once fully fully laden and she, she drove a few thousand kilometers along the east coast of South Africa um, stopping on an off-road. No problems. No moans, um, yeah, just and like I said, I'd like to give her a little bit of attention with the rust and the cosmetic damage that she has incurred, but we're getting there. She was in much worse condition two months ago and and, and, uh, and with a good wash and a nice service and some uh, blasting cleaning uh, has, has done her the world of good and she's back on the road and she's, she's loving it and I'm loving it. So that's, that's what I can add to, to the party. I hope it's been helpful and, and, and I've added something new that you've learned. If you have questions, please comment. Uh, and if you have any corrections, also comment. We have to all work together. Uh, but that's the beauty of motorcycling. We're, we're a bunch of brothers and we look after each other. Um, have a nice day. Bye. Cheers from uh, sunny South Africa.